I'm so thankful that Dion went to China to help look for Gobi. Even though they didn't have a good day uh, and didn't find him, I'm hopeful that in the days to come, Gobi will turn up. So let's see what happens. It was a difficult time. Everything just seemed so hopeless. He had put on a brave face and went back out to search with the team again, but it was just like the day before. They had several false leads, passed out a lot of posters, but got nowhere. A few good things did happen, though. The first was that Kiki managed to get a local TV show to agree to interview Dion about his quest to find Gobi. Dion was happy to do the interview. The article in the Daily Mirror back home was what had told the world about Gobi, after all. Maybe this interview could at least let the rest of the city know about the little dog and her plight. The TV station wanted to know why someone would come all the way from Scotland to look for one particular dog lost in the city. They also liked the fact that locals like Lou were ones leading the search. The interview led to increased local attention. They got a lot of new volunteers and the search team was now up to 50 people. Some of them even searched through the night walking the streets while Dion slept. He was immensely grateful that so many people had turned out to help him find Gobi. Gobi. Kiki had also suggested that they needed new posters. The old ones had been printed only in Chinese, but the local Uyghur spoke a dialect of Arabic. So they ordered new posters with the information in both languages. At least this way, no one here could claim they hadn't helped because they couldn't read the posters. International journalists became interested in Dion and Gobi's story all over again, too. It was clearly amazing to them that he would travel so far, but that had made, but that made it a great human interest story. Dion spoke with all of them. Every interview or article increased the chances that someone would recognize Gobi, and one good lead was all they need. That was <clears throat> also why Dion let people help him in the street to take a picture with him. He became a local celebrity. He had no idea what most people were saying, but that didn't matter. They always agreed to take a few posters as well, and Dion figured that they had to help at least a little bit. Dion got to know the other members of the search party a lot better. Mei Lin was sharp and sassy and always dressed if she were going to a fancy dinner party. Lou was sweet and had a sweet and a little sad. Dion could tell that she was still missing her own dog, even though it had been more than a year. The doctor was a little odd, but she was also fierce. One time an old man started shouting at them and tearing up their posters by the handful until the doctor got in his face. She shouted right back and finally the old man backed down and left them and left their posters alone. Plus, she always had treats for any dog they found and a smile for everyone except that old man. Their newest member was a young woman named Milan. She had seen Dion on the local TV station. As soon as the interview ended, she called Lou Zin and offered to help the search. Milan was one who picked up Kiki's suggestions and made sure that the new posters and the right things in Uyghur as well as Chinese. We also, she also was the one to lead them into the more crowded, more run-down Uyghur neighborhoods to distribute those posters. The other good thing was that a friend flew out to help with the search. Richard had been one of Dion's tent mates during the race and had been with him when he first bonded with Gobi. He had also been the one uh, to contribute to the crowdfunding campaign even before the first article. The fact that he was willing to take time to come back to China and help meant a lot to Dion. Richard also spoke fluent Chinese, which was a big help. Plus, with Richard there, Dion finally had someone to run with. He had started training for the next race as soon as he had gotten back home, but he had to put that on hold to come back and look for Gobi. Richard was a good partner for running around the park in the city. 
There were a few problems, though. When Dion took Richard to meet the rest of the team, Lu Zin looked upset about something. Lil explained that they had gotten a few unpleasant phone calls. Just someone being bad was all she would say. Tell me, I want to know. Lu Zin took a call this afternoon. They said that Gobi is going to be killed. That shocked Dion. It also terrified him. They had already had a few calls asking if the reward would be increased. What if this was part of that? What if someone had Gobi and was holding her until they felt the reward was big enough to bother with? And what if this was their way of saying that he needed to up the reward and he wanted to see Gobi alive again? Richard helped cheer Dion up. They took the time out to have a nice meal together. They talked about racing and their homes. Dion found out that Richard had been a U.S. Marine at some point in the past. Richard didn't say why he had left that life behind, just that he had needed a change. But Dion was touched that his friend would tell him even that much. Richard struck him as the kind of man who didn't share a whole lot, except with a few close friends. Richard also admitted that he had more suspicions about Gobi's disappearance and about Nirali's role in it all. None of this adds up, Richard said. Even without those calls, it still looks wrong to me. I don't think it's got anything to do with Nirali being in the U.S. or her father-in-law accidentally letting Gobi escape. I think the moment that Gobi's story went viral and the fundraising kicked in, someone saw a chance to make some money. That's what this is all about, Dion. Money. This is a shakedown. The call will come. Dion didn't want to believe it. Could people really be that awful to threaten a poor little dog just to make a few thousand dollars? He really hoped not. Then again, large parts of the city were poor and run down. That reward might not seem like a lot to him, but here it was practically a fortune. And lots of people would do all sorts of terrible things if it meant they might gain a fortune. While they were talking, Dion's phone buzzed. It was a message from Lou. Look at this photo, he read. Gobi? Question mark. The picture of, was a small, sandy brown dog, a deep scar cut in the dog's head. The picture wasn't very clear, but it did look like her to Dion. He said so in his reply. Don't you think we should go and have a look? Mate, we've got almost 30 of these. They're always the same. He glanced at the address Lou had included. It'll take an hour and a half to get there to see the dog, have a chat, and then get back. It's getting late, and we've got to be up early tomorrow. For another long day of pointless searching, he thought. He didn't say that, though. There was no point in depressing Richard as well. Richard took Dion's phone from him and studied the photos. Looks a little like Gobi to me, he offered. It was nice having someone else there who actually knew Gobi, but Dion didn't agree, or at least he didn't think a bit like was good enough. Thirty minutes later, Lou sent another message. This photo was much clearer, and someone had made the eyes bigger and pasted them next to Gobi's photo from the reward poster. Dion frowned and studied the two images. It could be her, he supposed. Maybe. Richard was more positive. We've got to go, he insisted. He took the phone and texted Lou to come get them. She replied that she would be right there and to meet her out front. Dion wasn't convinced, but he let his friend pay for dinner and then drag him out of the restaurant. At least this time, he wouldn't have to endure the disappointment alone he thought well do you think it's Gobi I sure hope it is we'll have to see tomorrow bye now